Well, good morning. My name is Jim Ott. I am working with the Marion Homeschool Assistance Program Student Council as an adjunct faculty advisor. I don't actually work at the school, but more with the school. I live in Dubuque, Iowa, and I am a school psychologist and been working with a variety of Eastern Iowa districts over 35 years. Uh, and of course, mental health is a passion of mine, helping families and students become mentally healthy. And the student council took that on as kind of an agenda for them this year as they tried to find ways to help students and their families deal with stress and manage uh, the mental health challenges of growing up, of school, of homeschool, of the community. And so I've been really privileged to work with them. You may know that these students have been doing some videos to support high school students in particular with the mental health challenges of the COVID quarantine. And we also want to offer some to parents and families. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Today's topic is going to be grief and the grief process. Now grief comes out of a reaction that we all have. It's a necessary, and I want to emphasize a healthy thing that all people go through in response to things that are not the way they're supposed to be. Now, the most obvious example of grief happens when there is death death of a family member, death of a relative, death of a pet, any kind of a death experience produces grief because in us, we kind of feel like, you know, it's not supposed to be this way. Like we never want someone to die. It's not supposed to be this way. We're appealing to a way that it is supposed to be. And in this gap between it's not supposed to be this way and the way that we wish or believe it's supposed to be is where grief takes place. It's healthy, it's necessary to come to a reasonable explanation of what has happened. Well, of course, it's obvious in death. What's a little less obvious is the grief process when just things in general are not the way that they're supposed to be. But in fact, and this is not just true about the quarantine, but for many experiences, and if you look for this in, your, in each other, in your, your families, uh, as parents looking to their children, you will discover what that these emotions are often seen in any situation where the child or where you yourself feel like it's not supposed to be this way. Well, in this case, we're in a quarantine where we kind of all know it's not supposed to be this way. We, we should have more access to mobility. We should be able to do the things we used to be able to do. We should have more ability to see and be with our friends. And so there's a lot of not supposed to be this way thinking going on right now. And in that, Families as a group and individuals within the family are going to go through some, some emotions related to grief. Now, I made a visual aid to kind of help with that today to show the, the, some of the stages of grief. Now, you can make other boxes, but these are common ones that people go through. And they all lead toward a box called acceptance. Now, acceptance is that box that we're shooting for where we get to that place where we've come to terms with what's happening. What I want to tell you first off is that it is normal for people to move from box to box. These don't go in any particular order. And you can even get to a place where you're feeling pretty content with things and bounce back into some of these boxes. That's normal in grief and it's healthy and it's a way that people process things. What's hard for us is when we recognize it happening in our children. And so these boxes, denial, fear and anxiety, anger, just being angry, just profound sadness, um, a sense of guilt. It's odd that we would feel guilty, but when things aren't the way they're supposed to be, it is naturally human to wonder, maybe I did something. Even small children will feel guilty about the stress that they're experiencing within a family. And then this bargaining stage where we're kind of like, well, maybe if I do this or change this, or if I try that, everything will be better. All of these are normal and healthy. The problem is that in a, in a family, everybody's going from box to box, Nobody's in the same box at the same time. And we're all, we can all kind of run up against each other in these boxes. Here's what I'd like to tell you as a parent and what I want to encourage you in. It's normal and healthy to see your children going through these boxes. What is also normal, but not always helpful, is that when we see our children in uncomfortable boxes, we want to try to talk them out of it. If they're mad, we want to tell them not to be mad. If they're sad, we want to tell them, you don't need to be sad. If they're worried, we try to get them out of the worry box. And what I want to encourage you to do today is to watch for these boxes, maybe even draw one of these yourself and have family meetings where you just say, hey, which of these boxes are you in today? 
talk, use this as a visual aid to help you talk through what everybody's experiencing. But don't necessarily feel that you need to talk your children out of the box that they're in, unless they get stuck in it for too long of a time. Because when you try to talk people out of their own boxes, what we end up teaching is repress your emotions. Don't talk about what you're feeling because you're not supposed to feel that way. These emotions are healthy. We'll talk about more of them in future videos about some of the specific ones, but I hope that this little visual will be helpful for you to process what you're seeing in your children, in yourself, and maybe have a tool to use to talk about it in your families. Hey, have a great day. Thanks for watching. If we can do anything for you, contact the Marion Homeschool Assistance Program uh, directly and ask them to get in touch with the Student Council, or you can contact me through my email, which is included in the notes for this video. Thank you so much.